Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker chill. No one can stop you if you have the will. So let's root, root, root for a good stream. We're adding our face to the game. And we'll run, throw with never a doubt. It's a Play ball. Hey. I 100% respect it. This is a video not to mock, but to 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 congratulate, to uh honor the hustle. That's right. A bar has opened up that refuses to air any men's sports. It airs only Women's sports. Bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see how this one works out. Now, I will say this. The name of the bar? Genius. Genius. The name of the bar is The Sports Bra. Just chef's kiss. I absolutely love it. Look. I know there are a lot of people out there that like women's sports, although I guess in 2022, you have to be a biologist to actually know what women's sports are. But I mean, there's, you know, televised women's soccer. There's the WNBA, which hilariously loses millions of dollars every single year, an average of $10 million in losses every single year because nobody wants to watch layups all day long. But that doesn't diminish that there are some people that want to watch women's sports. And I wanted to give the sports bra a huge shout out because the media is absolutely losing its mind shilling for this place. The sports bra, a sports bar that features women's sports. What? Last month, patrons waited in line for four hours to get into the hottest new spot in, oh, Portland, Oregon. Okay, okay, well, that makes more sense. This bar would not last in the Midwest. By the time they finally got through the doors, some burst into tears, while others hugged the bar's owner, Jenny Wen, shown above. It was the weekend of the NCAA Women's March Madness Tournament, as well as the opening weekend for the Sports Bra, a sports bar dedicated to to not only I'm sorry to only showing women's sports on their televisions. I mean, if if all they showed were women's competitive women's volleyball, I'd probably go. What started as kind of a joke, it still kind of is. It's something when wished existed for her and her friends to go watch games. It clearly had hit a nerve. And hey, good. I mean, if you go to a sports bar, I mean, I know all the sports bars I go to. They absolutely refuse to put on women's sports. There's a big sign in the bar that says, you know, they have 700 TVs. You know, every time I've asked for them to put on women's sports, they tell me no. Actually, all you have to do is ask and they'll put on whatever game you want. But anyway, she was born and raised in Portland, a city that just so happens to be the perfect spot to open a bar focused on women's sports. Their national women's soccer league team, the Portland Thorns, regularly sets attendance records. Well, that's pretty good. Locals love the Seattle Storm, a Pacific North, the Pacific Northwest WNBA team. And they cheer on the University of Oregon's women's basketball team, whose players have been drafted in the top rounds of the WNBA. I mean, look, again, I think it's a great idea. I, I absolutely love it. I, I think that this is the exact kind of stuff that you should do. And, and look, I think... They look like they have a nice little menu. To bring positivity to the city, I mean, it means a lot to me. To have a community come out and be like, we needed this right at this moment. There are only a handful of cities uh, that this bar could have launched in, and Portland is the top of that list for me. To understand why it resonated so deep with the people, and it helps to understand the frustration of being a woman's sports fan. <laughs> I bet it is frustrating. 
40% of athletes are women, yet they receive less than 10% of all the media coverage because nobody cares. I'm sorry. You go out on the street and you ask somebody to name five WNBA players that aren't named Cheryl Swoops. I would guarantee in most cities you would go 0 for 100. You could stay out there all day before you found the fan. Now, that isn't the women's fault who love to play the sport. I don't, I'm not trying to disparage them. I'm just saying no one wants to watch it. When the, when the best soccer team, uh, the best women's soccer team in, my, in this country gets crushed by high school kids in a pickup game, that's the perfect microcosm for why people don't want to watch it. It doesn't take away from these women's love for the sport. I mean, who doesn't love Megan Rapinoe, who says that, you know, she's deserved this and they deserve to be paid as much as the men, even though they have won 40th of the revenue. They should have the same paychecks the men get. 40% of athletes are women, yet they receive 10% of media coverage. You know why they only get 10% of media coverage? Again, supply and demand. The number is up from just 4% in recent years due to a concerted effort to get more visibility for women's sports. But it's still low enough that in order to watch their favorite teams, women's sports fans have to put in real work. Cobbling together streaming series, live streaming games on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, or just hoping they can view the game in person. Really? They don't... They, these games aren't streamed? I'm, I, I'm sure they are. In 2019, when the Washington Mystics were the WNBA Finals, I've never even heard of these teams. For the first time in franchise history, Natasha Cloud's family went to a local sports bar and asked them to put the game on so they could watch her play. The manager repeatedly laughed in their faces and refused to put the game <laughs> I guarantee that didn't happen. I guarantee. It couldn't be turned on to women's basketball because, quote, football was on. Never happened. Pro I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that never happened. I go, into, I go into sports bars all the time, okay, and I ask to put on specific games. I go into my local pub, and they have this stupid car channel on all the time when I go in there. And I'm like, hey, can you put the Brewer game on? Or, hey, can you put the Marquette game on? Uh, hey, can you put the... They just say, okay, whatever. What channel is it on? They're not like, is it men or women who are playing? And by the way, the two bartenders at my local pu 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 pub are lesbians. Okay, so like, and they've never, I mean, like, nobody cares. There's 10 TVs on in the bar. Nobody's ever really, they just watch whatever's on. Okay, I remember watching this, like, competitive marble racing last year during the lockdowns. Fascinating stuff. But, like, nobody cares. Nobody told them, no, I'm not putting the WNBA finals on for you. N never happened. Women's sports are ignored by mainstream TV channels. Is that right? Is that why ESPN, like 40% of their on-air talent are former female athletes? A longtime women's sports fan in Seattle. The fact that the only reason I'm currently able to watch my home NWSL team right now is because I had to purchase a streaming app. Welcome to the party, pal. I'm, I'm, I'm a Milwaukee Brewers fan, okay? In order to watch the Milwaukee Brewers play, a Major League Baseball team, okay, of these men, I have to pay for uh, a specific channel, Bally's, which is stupid. It used to be FSN, then they switched to Bally's, and now you have to... Anyway, I have to pay extra money to watch my sports team, too. Welcome to equality. Unless you live in a major market, okay, where you have like you're in LA where the stupid Lakers are on every single game, every single day, or the Dodgers are on every single game, or you have your own TV network like the Braves, okay, or the Cubs on WGN, where like every single game's always on, you have to pay for it. I do. It has nothing to do with men versus women, it has everything to do with the number of people that want to watch. So I think that this is a great idea. Arthur, 48, was so moved by the mission and the existence of this bar that she and her family built 
a visit into the spring break road trip past month. I'm a mother to two teenage boys, she says. I want them to grow up knowing that women and women's sports are super fun to watch and support. They're not fun to watch. Sorry. Beach volleyball, exciting. Women's golf, no. Golf in general is not exciting to me. Women's hockey I might watch. It might be fun, but they're not. The WNBA is not fun to watch. Um, and I'm not alone in saying that. It's impossible to change what will happen rather sooner than later. Networks are starting to realize the truth that if women's sports are on TV, people watch them. Yeah. If something's on TV, people will watch it. That's why infomercials are on every night. I used to watch infomercials, you know, because we didn't have cable when I was, until I was in my late 20s. We couldn't afford cable. So it's like, you know how many Ron Popeil episodes? I loved Billy Mays. Like, when Billy Mays died, that was like one of the saddest days of my life. Pitchmen, which was on cable later, only got one season, but it was amazing. Him with Anthony Sullivan. Like, all these, like, yeah. It's on TV. I'm, you know, everyone's just enjoying uh, like an herbal remedy, sitting around. It's on. You watch it. That doesn't make it good. ESPN Plus, by the way, an app you have to pay for. Bosa's app airs forty thousand games a week. That's just for at-home users. The commercial version of the app only has eight thousand games. When said, that's just four of those, and just four of those games are women's sports. Four out of eight thousand. I mean, hey, this is cool. I mean, I, I hope it works for them. It looks like their customers really like it. They have 90 reviews, 4.7 stars. Everyone says the food's good. It looks like they have, like, you know, artisanal beer, ciders, and cocktails. It looks like they have good food. Yeah, I mean, and watch women's sports. Hard pass. But if the food and the drinks are good, nobody really cares. I mean, their food menu looks pretty good. Mom's, whoa! Mom's Baby Back Ribs, which is an appetizer, 26 bucks? This must be big city prices. These are like, these are like, um, $9 for a grilled cheese? A cheeseburger? A cheeseburger is $16? What the four dollars for fries? Fifteen dollars for a beet salad? I I can only assume that this is like big big city prices. I I can't even a smash burger is eleven dollars. A club sandwich is fifteen. Oh my god. Okay. Yep. I'm just gonna chalk it up to it's it's in a big city. I would never pay $15 for a club sandwich. It better be the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. But I suppose the food better be pretty good if you're making me watch WNBA games. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.